Hello everyone, this is Marco and welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to be looking at something that the fans have been wanting since 1993. It is something really special that Mattel decided to give us and I'm honestly really excited about this one. It is the Jurassic Park electronic real feel Tyrannosaurus Rex for the Jurassic Park 30th anniversary. And man does this thing look great. For once in the UK we have been quite lucky as we are the first ones to have actually gotten this in stores. The first ones in the world. So enough babbling and let's take a look at the box first. As you might see it is a very obvious and very bold callback to the original Kenner packaging. It has the classic red sunset with black silhouettes of palm trees and plants. I love that massive Jurassic Park logo right there in the corner. There's also a JP30 new logo right there, which looks amazing. And this figure is part of a line that Mattel has named the 93 Classic. And if you're not aware, some items from this line have actually been teased and revealed by Mattel themselves in the Jurassic Outpost Behind the Gates videos. And they all look super cool. <laughs> Let's take a look at the other side of the box. The Kenner tribute does not stop with the front of the box. As you can see behind, there's some pictures of the new products that they're gonna release under this line. And the pictures are pretty much spot on identical to what we see on the back of the box of the Kenner figures. It all looks really 90s inspired and it's really pulling at the heartstrings of every fan of the first film and toy line. There's a massive Jurassic Park logo right there and a sort of uh, CG rendition of the toy. Unfortunately, they did not use sort of a, a set, like a model set for the pictures of the Rex. Instead, they used a very sort of pixely and blurry picture of like a forest and whatever. I must say that doesn't look great. It, it does look pretty pixely, but yeah, that's not really the focus of this um, picture. The main attraction is the figure itself. If Hasbro ever decided to release something like this, if they had the license still, they would probably release it under the Kenner line, like what they do with the Star Wars figures. That would have included an original Kenner logo, which would have looked absolutely amazing. But Mattel have done a really good job anyway with the packaging. It looks absolutely phenomenal. That's not really a big surprise as Mattel really nails their packaging almost every time. So how do we get this figure out of the box? The toy is held in by two paper straps at the top and there's two plastic parts that uh, sort of slot in the feet. So we need to remove those first. How do we remove those? Well, we want to turn the box upside down and there's a pull tab right there. We just need to stick our finger in there and pull until the plastic parts are revealed. Then we twist them round and it releases the feet. So here is the toy. It looks amazing and it feels amazing. I can already tell that uh, they did put a lot of effort into this, although they could have put a little bit more effort in, but we'll get into that later. The first thing that struck me was the feel of this toy. It feels very similar to the original Kenner stuff. They labeled this as a real feel toy, which is the same name they used for the Mosasaur toy that they released. But that didn't really feel that rubbery. It felt more like a softer plastic, but this feels really different. It feels really soft to the touch. And if you own a Kenner figure, it does feel really similar. So that's amazing. This has the same exact colors as the original Red Rex that Kenner released back in the day with some changes. It's not identical, but we'll get into that. When I first saw some pictures online of this toy, I was a little concerned with this part here of the head. They had to kind of extend it back so they could incorporate the articulation further back to give it a wider mouth opening because this figure also swallows figures and it's got a slit in the tummy right here where you can pull the figures out. This is an obvious callback to the bull T-Rex that Kenner released 
but that was for the Lost World line. So this is kind of a mix between that Bull T-Rex and the Red Rex. It also has some sounds incorporated. You, as you can see, there are no buttons on it. So how does this thing work? Well, the button is very cleverly hidden underneath the soft rubber plastic, and it's right there. Before we delve into all the details, let's have a listen to these sounds. There is a speaker under here, and it is really loud. So here goes. Straight away, that is not a T-Rex sound from any of the films. I don't know what that's supposed to be. It's not even the sound from a Kenner toy. That's just completely made up and that's really strange. Okay, um, I'm pretty sure there's more than one noise. So let's hear. Okay, so that is a really low uh, T-Rex noise from Jurassic World. It's not the classic Jurassic Park higher pitched one, but that's okay, kind of works still. It's uh, definitely a T-Rex from the franchise, so that works. There's a nice chomp sound and then the Jurassic World roar again. nice grumbly sound there's that weird sound again I'm not sure how many sounds there are but uh, we've heard some repeats already okay so that was another repeat Right, so there seems to be about four sounds in total. I might be wrong, but yeah, they sound all right. They're not perfect. That uh, that weird T-Rex noise, I just don't understand what that's meant to be. But uh, the other sounds are from the newer films and that still works because it is a Jurassic Park franchise sound. So that kind of makes sense. You might have noticed that there is a weird sort of thing here on the leg. And that is the scan code. A lot of people aren't fans of this. I think it works all right, especially if you want to modify your T-Rex, you can remove that. And as you can see, they sculpted some muscle under there. You could fill this gap in and sculpt a bit more muscle in there and it could be a really cool wound feature. And that's really cool in my opinion. Very 90s, if you ask me. Anyway, let's have a closer look at the sculpt. So this is pretty much a shrunken down version of the Super Colossal T-Rex. It is the same exact sculpt with some changes on the head. It is the same sculpt as the Extreme Chomping T-Rex as well, minus the weird sort of uh, neck articulation and articulated uh, tail right there. The main changes are on the head. They have retextured the head and changed it a tiny bit to incorporate that uh, extra articulation. But this is kind of a mix between all of the sculpts they've done for the T-Rex, minus the Hammond Collection uh, Rex head sculpt. As you can see, the cheek bit here is really rounded, and that kind of reminds me a bit of the Thrash and Throw T-Rex. But then if you look at it closer, the details are a bit different and the sculpt's a bit sharper. If you look at it from the front, the head is much wider than that of the Extreme Chomping, and that kind of suggests me that it's from the new uh, Jurassic World Dominion T-Rex toy. So they did put some effort into the head sculpt, and that really shows. It might be a bit too wide, but it still looks really good nonetheless. Let's remember this is a toy. It's not meant to resemble a high premium sort of uh, collector's item. It is very clearly aimed at collectors because it is kind of a replica sort of of the kind of stuff, but it is still a children's toy. That much accuracy isn't to be expected, although at least some level of accuracy is always expected for any kind of uh, toy from a franchise. This is kind of close enough. As I said, the detail on the head is spectacular. Look at those scales. 
the rest of the body is pretty much identical to the super colossal t-rex we've got the same details the same wrinkles in the skin the same big feet the same arm position this time though they are articulated like this and out like that too which is super nice and the tail as you can see the tail is straight with a little sort of bend here it sort of insinuates that it should continue around like that but it doesn't why is it straight you might ask well that's because there is a wire inside yeah, you can bend this thing. It doesn't work that well. There's some weird plastic stuff going on on the inside here. You can feel it. But from here on, you can definitely feel a wire. So let's try bending this thing. There we go. And it bends. So that works pretty well. It doesn't work that well here. It almost feels like it's broken but I don't think it is I think it's just meant to be like this it doesn't bend it's almost like the plastic bit inside here isn't connected to that part there is a plastic core inside this part and that runs along the top part of the body here and it joins down here to the arms all the rest is hollow rubber so how could they have improved the sculpt of this figure they have made a better T-Rex sculpt, in my opinion, with the epic roaring T-Rex. It would have made more sense to me to use that sculpt as it's got a bigger, deeper chest, which means that it would have swallowed toys a bit easier as well. If you want a toy to sort of have a whole area in there to store some figures, it would make sense to use the sculpt that is actually a bit wider and have a deeper chest which makes it even more accurate to the films because the T-Rex in the films has got a deeper chest than this. It sort of lacks definition between the neck and the tummy and the chest. It's still, it's kind of there with this bit, but it's not as good as the epic roaring T-Rex. The rest of the sculpt's pretty good for a toy. That's my only thing really. And this part here kind of annoys me too. I see why they did it, but I did test it out with just opening the bottom jaw and it can still swallow figures. Let me give you a little demonstration. So for example, let's take this belly here. First, I'll show you with the whole mouth open, like so. You grab your figure, shove it in the gob, nom nom, and there she is. So you just need to pull her out. And that's how it works. Now let's try with just the bottom jaw opening. It works just fine. So I have ordered a second one of these. I'm gonna try and modify it to remove that kind of ugly thing there, to give it a deeper chest and see how it goes. Uh, it really kind of pains me to modify one of these because they look pretty good already. But I know I probably go a bit crazy in time because I am kind of a perfectionist. <laughs> That would annoy me a lot, so it's just me really. Also, I might try stuffing it with the uh, teddy bear stuffing or kapok and give it a nice squishy feel. That might help the chest area to be to look a bit beefier as well. Also, I've been working on something, a little replacement piece for the tummy to make it look a bit more like the Red Rex from 1993. So that one didn't have a swallowing feature. This still isn't perfect. It doesn't look that great. I need to... <laughs> I need to tweak it still. I'll just probably make a sticker that is slightly textured or whatever and see what happens. Going back to the paint job, it is not the same shade as red as the original Red Rex. Unfortunately, I don't have my Red Rex here because I have it in my storage unit, which is miles away from here, because remember, we're still trying to move house. <laughs> we're in a very small temporary place right now, which is one of the reasons why I haven't been making rubber saws is because I don't have the space for it. But yeah, it's not identical. This um, color is a lot more saturated. It's a lot more red than the original Red Rex. Also, the original Red Rex had a darker brown on the feet, on the front part of the legs and the feet here. It didn't have painted claws on the hands, so 
So that's kind of accurate still. And I think the tummy color was a little bit greener than this. This is more like a yellow, but honestly, I don't really mind. It's totally fine. To give you a better idea of what color this thing is, it is the exact same color as this red Raptor here. The one that has been released not too long ago. It's probably one of the latest releases, I think, as of now. And yeah, these, <laughs> these two go really well together. They look like they're friends. It is the exact same shade of red. So I hope that helps you get a better idea of what color this Red Rex is. And if you have this Raptor and an original Kenner Red Rex, you can compare the two and see how different they are. I hope this helps. <laughs> so in terms of other modifications, I would like to try and do smaller feet for it as well. But again, I kind of, I kind of like it already as it is. It looks good. I'm not trashing on it at all. It looks really nice. They could have used a better sculpt, but that's totally fine. This thing feels amazing. Let's talk about the feel again. So I've noticed that the legs are made of hollow, hard plastic, like all the other Rexes that Mattel have released, but it does feel a bit sort of stronger. It feels like the plastic is a bit thicker and it gives it a really sort of nice feel. Also, we have the classic articulation in and out like this articulate backwards and forwards it kind of feels a bit stronger this time compared to the extreme chomping figures because they would dip down in time this feels a bit stronger i don't know if this will change in time the rubber feels amazing now but we'll see if it's as strong as kenna's rubber in time and we'll see if this thing tears in time and Hopefully it's really good quality. It definitely feels really good quality for now. So overall, I think I would give this thing a seven or an eight out of 10. The sounds definitely could have been better. And if they used other sculpts that they've already made in the past, well, that would have been better too. That's already two points away from a 10. Editor Marco here. I think it would have been much better if they did a brand new sculpt because it is the 30th anniversary of Jurassic Park. But uh, I, I guess it still works, but it would have been a lot better. Anyway, back to you, me. And maybe that could have been done a little bit different. Um, actually, now I look at it. Yeah, see that? This bit doesn't really go in. If it went in they would have managed to hide this a lot better. But instead they just took the Super Colossal Rex sculpt of the neck and just didn't tweak that bit. They just left it flat like that. Yeah, if it went in a bit more, it would have helped to hide this thing here. Would it have affected the swallowing? Probably not because that plastic's quite thick anyway. Yeah, I am. Um... Yeah, I think that might have worked better if they did make this part of the neck go in a bit more. Let me know in the comment section down below. I'm not sure if I will gonna sell any replacement parts because it is beautiful already. But uh, let me know if you do want some sort of improved parts or a tutorial on how to improve this, this thing. I don't think it's that needed, but if you want me to do it, I'll do it. Let's compare it to the Hammond Collection Rex and see the size difference. Right, so this is my Hammond Collection T-Rex that my friend Martin sent me. Bless his heart, he's really sweet. <laughs> he's been providing me with all the toys I need. And these have my replacement feet and the replacement head that I recently made. I will be releasing a video on this really soon, but let's have a look at the size difference. So if we put them next to each other, the Hammond Collection T-Rex is definitely longer by about an inch. So if I was to line up the tails like so, you can see that there's a big gap here and that's about an inch. Also in height, it really depends on how you pose your T-Rex, but in a standard pose like this, the Hammond Rex is slightly taller too. So generally the Hammond Rex is a bit bigger, but it still sizes up really well. I think it might be the same size as an Extreme Chomping T-Rex, which would make sense. If you were to compare this to a Kenner figure, uh, this would be a lot smaller. I do have a Kenner Thrasher T-Rex, so maybe we can compare it to that one. 
Right, so here is the Thrasher T-Rex from the Lost World line from 1998 or 97, I should say. And this T-Rex is slightly longer. It's about the same length as the Hammond Collection uh, Rex, but it is much taller, actually. It's got much longer legs. The head is a bit smaller too. Mm, actually, yeah, a tiny bit smaller. They're about the same size though, if you don't count that extra bit on the Red Rex's head. In terms of feel, they're quite similar. I would say this one feels a little bit more like squishy and rubbery to the touch like this. Well, this, if you go like this, it feels more like a softer plastic. But if you squeeze them like this, they feel quite similar actually. So I think Mattel did an excellent job with that rubber feel. It's editor Marco again here. I just want to point out, I just can't get over how nice that sculpt on that old Kenner Rex is. Look at the detail on the back and look at the shape. It just looks so much nicer. Uh, sorry for the interruption. So I think the last comparison is against one of my rubber saws. So here's my T-Rex and they actually feel quite similar, to be honest. Um, I feel like this softer plastic, like if you squeeze it, it takes a bit longer for it to bounce back. Well, my one sort of goes back pretty much straight away. I don't know how to explain it. It's really hard to, <laughs> to explain. It certainly feels a tiny bit different. This feels a little bit more rubbery. I don't know. They do feel quite similar anyway. But man, I wish Mattel did that belly texture underneath. In terms of size, yeah, my Rex is about the same length as the Hammond Collection one. So about an inch difference. And height, the height at the hips, mine is definitely taller, but at the head, they're about the same. It obviously, it depends on which pose you want. So. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Let me know all your thoughts about this thing. If you like it, if you don't, what you would have done differently. And if Mattel would release more classic sort of 93 or even classic 97 would be cool. Um, let me know what you would like to see from them. I've recently heard that uh, Mattel Creations, which is a subdivision of Mattel that uh, focuses more on collectible stuff, is going to be working on these Jurassic figures. So that's really exciting. They usually take fan suggestions to heart. So that's really exciting to see what Mattel has reserved for the future of this line. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. I would like to give a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. Seriously guys, your support really does mean the world to me as it helps me do what I love for you. You help me buy materials and most of all, you give me a helping hand with improving the quality of the content of my videos. Even if it's just a small donation, every little helps.